In today's episode, Courtney and I sit down with Scott Smith, and we're going to be breaking down what Scott's experience has looked like going from one agency to two agencies, how he's dealing with managing that process and creating a team and, and a brand new culture. Not only that, he's going to share his AQS formula with us. With that being said, let's start the show. Are you tired of hiring new producers only to find out that your sales numbers aren't increasing like you need them to? If so, you're not alone. Many insurance agencies face the same problem, but the solution isn't always to hire more people. It's about equipping your team with the right skills and training. That's where our insurance training program comes in. We understand the unique challenges faced by insurance agencies, and we've designed a comprehensive training program to help you and your team succeed. Weaver Sales Academy is a 24-7 on-demand training curriculum specifically tailored for your insurance sales. The program includes our exclusive 10-day plug-and-play new hire training to teach any insurance professional how to sell multiple products, sell on value versus price, overcome objections, and more. It also includes our eight-week advanced training to perfect the auto, home, and life insurance presentation over the phone and in person. Not only that, we've included product-specific sales training, word tracks, scripts, closing techniques, and more. There's so much more to the program, so if you're interested in joining the program that's helped over 10,000 insurance agents nationwide, visit www.weaversa.com or send me a text directly at 816-727-7610 with any questions to find out more. Hey, welcome to the Insurance Buzz. We are your hosts, Michael and Courtney Weaver, and we have a very special guest with us today, Scott Smith. Scott, how are you? Doing great. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on today. Absolutely. I'm excited to talk about some business ownership, leadership. You recently, so you're a rock star, you're a stud, your agency always crushes. You recently went from one agency to now two locations. I would love to hear what that transition looked like, maybe some struggles that you've you've had along the way and how you've overcome those. In June of 2022, I was awarded Moda, AMOA. It's three miles from my current office. And so one one consideration was, is that, you know, we're already in the market. Is that too close? Does that make any sense? The second question or challenge was, it was really Brady Bunch thing where we brought together an agent who had retired, he'd been out of over 40 years, and then an agent that had unexpectedly died, and he'd been out of 54 years. And so you meld together these three cultures, my my own for my legacy, and the two now defunct offices, right? So there was a lot of there was a lot of talking and meeting and bringing things together and finding common ground. And, and I knew that if I tried to ramrod things that there could be resistance and could slow down our progress. So those were some of the considerations and just getting everybody on the, like they say, in the right positions and rowing in the same direction. One of the first things I do, which I always encourage any business owner to do in any industry is sit down with the team and say, what is our culture in, in three words or three characteristics that we want to that we want to be known for, that we want to live for, that we want to embrace? And so I give them the three over at our legacy. And they made a couple tweaks, but it ended up being pretty close to the same. And so they could rally around that. They really felt like that was their own. And, and so some of the things I took from my le- legacy over there and some things we've done slightly differently, but They've gelled really well. The good news is that both of the old agents and those old agencies are on the old contract, of course. And so they didn't, weren't in a growth plan and they were writing maybe 20 policies a month per office. And we broke 200 apps in uh, back-to-back months last year. And we broke 100 life applications last year. Just, it looks like we're going to just miss chairman circle in that office, which is not bad starting from, you know, pretty much nothing, no, no, not a lot of carryover. So it's been a a great experience. And I believe that 
the coolest thing is we had some 20 plus year team members in that group that didn't know if they could produce. I remember the first time they filled out their goals, they were really reluctant and scared. They're, well, maybe I can do 23 a month or something. And these are the same folks that are doing sometimes 70, 75, 80 applications in a month. So it's really exciting to see them believe in themselves and know they can do it. That's been probably one of the coolest things. So if you have somebody that has been around for 20 plus years and you're gearing them up for production, what does that conversation look like? Not a whole lot different than somebody that is brand new. We'll sit down and I'll just say, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And the only thing I know that will work over and over again is my AQS formula, right? Which is to double my sales, I got to double my quotes and double my quotes, I got to double my activity. We have a very simple tracking system. The only three things we report in any meeting or ask anybody to talk about is how many activities did you have last week? How many legit contacts with an existing customer or prospective customer? How many quotes did you provide? And then how many sales did you close? So it wasn't much different. And I think they really gravitate toward that because it's very clean and concise and And maybe before they didn't have that, they weren't sure what they were doing. And so it was a lot, it was was a lot like somebody that would be new to my legacy. What do you define as a quote? This gets kind of murky across the board. My thing is make it easy. So we, we call a quote, it's like an at bat in baseball, right? So if I quote you and Michael and you have three cars and a boat and an umbrella and a home and I say, can I also, I pivot to, can we give you guys a couple of quotes on life insurance? You say, yes. Yeah. So I didn't have that up in my head, but that's seven or eight quotes. So to me, if we're going to count policies issued as say the hits in, an, in a batting average, then we got to be consistent with the at-bat. So some agents count entire households. I count it by policy. I think it gives the team member a lot more excitement and confidence. It also gives them the initiative to dig deeper as I start talking and they think Scott wants me to do 30 quotes this week, if I get someone and we've opened up that conversation to be able to kind of keep asking questions and it gets them, I think it emboldens them, right? Because they go into, can we talk about life insurance or other, we talk about health insurance and just being able to deepen that, that initial relationship. So that, that's why I said a, I wouldn't say a low bar, but I make I make it I make it possible. That's the way I think most of my team members have told me is you make you make this very doable. And I mean, who doesn't who doesn't want to succeed? They ha- yeah, goals have to be attainable and achievable. So just to so a seven product household would be seven quotes. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, that's good. And then a quote like. Do you consider a quote like where they're delivering the price and asking for payment information or if they just like email out some numbers that's like what's what are your what are your details on that? I guess it's up to the team member. You know, I tell them if you're just going to mass email out a bunch of ghost quotes, that's fine. I'm trying to help you <laughs> succeed and I want the best for you and it's just like when you go out golfing if I want to count my own strokes, I'm not going to count that, I'm going to count that and in the end it's like you know, I only shot, I don't, darn, I darn near shot par, but then when we got and we're accounting for real, I find out the hard way that I was, you know, I was awful on myself. Right. So <laughs> I, I tell them you do it how you, you know, did you provide a quote to a prospect or to an existing customer? And if you got your 30 in the week and you feel good about it, more power to you. But what we're going to look at in, at the end of the month is what's your close ratio and the first suspect would be what's the quality of these quotes look like. But I get it. People are harder than ever to get a hold of. And you get it. You get an Internet lead in and you hurry and bang out the quote or you talk to them once by phone. You can't get a hold of them again. You send the thing off. Yes. I mean, give yourself every opportunity to win and get it out there. But if you want to keep counting mass ghost quotes, I, I talked to an agent this week, tried to help him. And he was saying that. He did my suggestion with counting out known calls, but he found out that they had somehow found a number that was a dead phone and 
they were calling that, the team members were calling that however many they needed to make up the gap a week. And so he said, do I fire him? What do I do? And I said, I don't know that fire him. I just say, if you're not going to make any money, right? If you're just going to, if you're just going to blow smoke and fudge the numbers, garbage in, garbage out. So I can't help you and correct you and coach you if you're not going to, if you're not going to be pretty on the level about what, what activities and coach you're providing. Yeah. Yeah. That was why like we switched because we tracked calls extremely early in our agency career. And I found that the team members would focus so much on the calls that when they did get somebody on the phone, that they wouldn't maximize that conversation. So about 18 months in, we actually went from encouraging calls to quotes and the length of the calls on the quote conversation. And then we transitioned to like a quote is actually where you present and ask for the sell minimum of three times. And that's the only way. So then we actually could, instead of tracking so many quotes, it was really three. Cause if you could have three quality conversations a day, my typically the team would close at least one of those. So around 30% and each household average anywhere between three to five apps at a minimum. So that was, that's interesting that somebody would just call, I would say the culture's a little, uh, in that example you just said, <laughs> the culture needs to be fixed a little bit just to get, get done with things. So I'm curious, Scott, though, going from one to two agencies, how have you, how's your management style had to change in managing two offices, two teams versus just the one location or one team? Out of necessity, I've had to simplify. And so I have a lot of before, after pictures of what my reports used to look like to the team. And we've skinnied all that way down. I've leaned on the legacy team to do more of the reviews. We are a very big review centric team here at the legacy. And then the flip side is at the MOA, it's been a little bit of a battle because these agents have been there so long and the customers are reluctant and resistant to come in. They're like, I don't want to change anything. I already know I've been here a million years. So we're saying, I know, but th this is new. And Scott has a different kind of review. And, and so the team right here at the Legacy has been really stepped up and they're doing more reviews and they're no, no surprise doing more financial services. And at the MOA, we, we, did, we did okay last year, but I'm trying to teach that team. And let's not just have reviews when on the days I'm there, you guys need to have reviews five days a week. Cause that's really how we, A, build relationships and deepen that aspect of it. And B, we need to lower lapse can. And so the legacy is strong in growth mode is it and actually has a lower lapse can than the MOA, which you'd think most people have been with State Farm a million years, a lot of GRPs in the book, a lot of 10 year AFDs. And yet we, have a, a higher lapse can over there. And I, I think it just comes down to training the customer and my customers at the legacy office don't know any better. They just know that there's a review every year. It also goes to the MOA specifically brand loyalty is an all time low. So you all going and making, and if they were in a book of business that the agent never met with them, those relationships aren't established. And so by you all going in and doing that, you're going to be able to lower the lapse can tremendously over the next few years. And, obviously be able to grow and scale just from the inside sales. That'll be, that's a great opportunity. Your supervisor is constantly telling you that they need more life insurance out of you. They need more apps. They need more premium, but you don't know how. I know I heard this from my supervisor all the time and I was like, that'd be great, but I don't know how to produce more life insurance. They never trained me. This is exactly why we created the six figure life insurance producer course just for you. So if you want to know exactly how to bring life insurance up, on those new business PNC sales conversations, when you're servicing a current customer, when you're having an appointment with a customer, whether it's in person or virtually, this is exactly why we created this course. You'll learn from the playbooks, the video training, the word tracks, the scripts, so you'll know exactly how to not only bring it up, but the questions to ask to get them interested in having a conversation with you, how to educate them on the policies you have for their plan and how to ask for the sell a minimum of three times in any life insurance conversation. So the best part is it's a one-time investment. You own everything I just shared with you and more forever. So if you're interested, make sure you click the link below, quit struggling,
and learn exactly what it takes to be a six-figure life insurance producer. One of the things that you said in the beginning, though, when you were talking about going from your original office to your second office, is you said, I took some things and I left some things. I'd be curious what you mm. took and what mm. you left from one to going to two. Sure. We took for sure was the, was the AQS, right? And we said, look, I'm to Michael's point a minute ago, most agents I talk to that call and need help or want advice, they're asking for like 100 outbound calls a day. And they're shocked to hear that as much as we produce, our number is only 100 a week. And so to the point where we do get a ton of phone calls inbound, we understand. We also know that sometimes you text them and email them and that's all doesn't count on the call. We're just saying, I know all beyond all that, just make 100 calls. So we took the AQS system in. We took the white, we have a big old school whiteboard in the back. We literally duplicated it and took it and hung it up back there. And those things, I think we're just visual and had an immediate understanding that this is how we play. And things I left behind, I think that in the beginning, like in our legacy, if you don't do 30 policies a month, you're on an action plan. And we had certain incentives in the legacy that we we kind of, we basically lowered the bar to a point just to get some just to get some experience and get some taste of victory over at the other office. We didn't have anybody on an action plan for the first five months, by which time they were they were doing great. So I think just going in with a kind of a junior version of what we had here, where there is an expectation, my name's on that marquee out there and on the door. And so I do want excellence, but let's let let's let's step into it. And I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. We changed our meeting format a little bit, which we ended up adopting the the MOA meeting format now for both offices, which is far more simplified and cuts the chase quicker, shorter meeting, just things like that. Are you meeting as like one entire organization versus two separate teams? We do have a joint meeting the first Wednesday of every month. So we have one next Wednesday on the 7th where we bring everybody together. And that meeting's a little different. Well, the two team leads will talk about the month prior and how we did and they'll go over, they have a graph where they'll show activities, quotes and sales and how we're trending as opposed to in the weekly meetings, which we have the legacy on Wednesday mornings and the MOA on Friday mornings where we're talking more about that that week. And so this, the focus shifts to monthly in these bigger meetings. There are awards given, prizes. I think some, some folks know about our free bacon, which is uh, just a kind of a funny story about how if you write five, anyone that writes five life policies in that prior month or more gets a thing of expensive bacon because that's what one person said she wanted. And I said, if you hit it, I'll give it to you. Over it, She's over the MOA. And the girl at the desk next to her said, what about me? Oh, I'll get it for you too. Now I'm bringing you know, a whole bunch of bacon every meeting to hand out um, and just different. Well, who the hell doesn't like bacon? Yeah, yeah. Man? I love that. Well, I, think, I think even our vegetarians eat it, but you know, um, <laughs> just different prizes. And we have a, an award structure where it starts with service star. So we'll award to a, a really great service person in their, usually in their first year. And then we move into the ALA award, which would go to the top performer of each office. I've got like this little trophy that looks like the Oscar, except it's a girl. And then if you win the ALA, I think it's either five or six times, I have to look up the rules, but you're then admitted into our team member hall of fame. Our state doesn't have a team member hall of fame. I started trying to organize one. And for most agents, I said, yeah, just call me when you get it done. Let me know when to show up. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm going to put all this work into this. I'm just going to start one for my own team. And so that's what we've, that's what we've been doing. So we have a, just like agency, we have a hierarchy of, of trophies and awards and things. And we're always giving out all kinds of crazy awards, all kinds of different fuzzy socks. One time we gave out and jackets and Birkenstocks. That was a huge winner. And it's all kinds of gifts. I like the bacon. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Bacon is, a, <laughs> it's, it's a hotly contested thing that people, people want it. Right? 
We want it so yeah, because it's like ten bucks a pack. Yeah. And I've heard of some good incentives, but bacon, I'm like, I can get behind a bacon incentive. All right. You're gonna throw down some crispy, thick bacon in front of me. Let's do this. Yep. <laughs> five five life gets you, as Courtney pointed out, ten bucks. You get five if I can get yeah. If I give somebody ten bucks to write five life every month, that's a good deal. <laughs> Your ROI is incredible. It's, it's a killer, yeah. <laughs> oh shoot. Has your workload increased since going from and you last time I talked to you worked quite a bit. I don't know if you still have that same work schedule or not of, of 12, 15 hour days, but did your when you went from one to two, did you see your workload increase some or have has, has it remained about the same? In the, initially, yeah, it definitely did. And I started wondering what am I what have I done? But just somewhere we turned the corner and I'm in the legacy Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. And the MOA Wednesday, Thursday. So, you know, in two days in a row, I used to alternate. I felt like you just can't get any traction. So I just kind of do two and two. The legacy just, as I would guess most people with, with a MOA would imagine, is about two and a half times bigger than in number of customers and volume and team num- number of team. But I really have two excellent team leads and like I always say, you know, I mean, Lone Ranger, he really wasn't, he wasn't going it alone. We had Tonto, right? Or Jordan and Pippin. You you have to have that second that you trust implicitly and has your back because it's almost like a mom and dad. You go to the kids and if you're a single parent, they, I, at least my, my guess is, the you know, it's kind of a three against one, for example. But when you've got two two leaders that go in with the united front and say this is what we got to do and that team member is loyal to you the rest of the team members become at first i think loyal to them and then by virtue of that to you and so we've really the legacy has never looked back i was really worried about jeopardizing their position in the company and they've just continued onward and upward had a record year in 2023 and the moa has exceeded our expectations and we finished in our district of about 42 agencies. The legacy finished second. There is a guy that has a satellite office, so he gets to combine his two. And so he beat us. And then in uh, the legacy finished fifth. So that's not bad. It's a big area. There's a lot of good agents. What was your struggle with having a team that size and then going into your second office Did you have any struggles around like team meetings? Did that have to shift? I know we have the big team meeting, but I'm talking about like one-on-one reviews. Was there any feeling like you're not spending as much time as this at this first office going into your second office? Did they feel left behind? Were they running full steam? How was that? So the MOA was, they were just happy to get attention. You know, their prior agents were veteran agents that weren't there a lot, didn't have a lot of interaction with them. None of them had ever seen a review before which is interesting because like I said, the senior team members had been there over 20 years. And so they got to come in and why I'd say, if you set the appointment, you invite the person in that, you know, from the book you came from and also go meet with them and you can see how I do it. And if anything comes from that, it's yours. And so they really liked that and it helped them step up from, I think just a person that takes a phone call and takes a payment and hangs up to, a person that pivots and a person that understands need and able to ask the questions better. So they were pretty, they were pretty fired up about that. As far as the, the original office, they didn't seem to really mind that I wasn't there as often. I think they were kind of glad to get rid of me, but they, <laughs> it's such a well-oiled machine at that team. They've been together. We always talk about winning Super Bowls and things and, or winning a World Series or whatever. Usually the team that does that has been to play together for a while. So, you know, so many people call me and say, how do I make Germans or call me make Presence Club? Well, you, I mean, you can, you can have a one hit wonder, but likely if that becomes consistent, you've got to have a core team that's used to playing together. And so we have that in the legacy. We're trying to develop that in the mower, well, probably a piece or two away. But the to answer the other question about, What's it like to go from a meeting with eight or nine people, team meeting to two in the beginning? Not a lot different. I guess I just thought back to my rookie year, my Tika year, and remember that kind of conversation. And 
we had more time for training and sharing philosophy and really just helping develop that strong culture. And pre-opening of the mall, we did have some some parties together with uh, with a legacy. We they call each other work cousins. And so I had this cousin thing where we had a night where we just went out to a park and had pizza and another night where we went out and got some dinner together and just trying to get to know them and let them see that people are people, right? Everybody wants the same thing. So that was, that was the, I guess, the bringing, the bringing together to a point, the cultures, we still call them work cousins and one one thing they're excited about at the MOA might not be that exciting at the Legacy, so we we tailor it to to each office. You said you're missing. You're almost there in your core unit for your second office. What are you missing right now? What would make it like round out? We started off gangbusters. We had four producers and one very experienced service person. The top producer, as can sometimes happen was having a difficult time getting along with the rest of the team. She was the one outsider that was brought in. And at some point I got kind of a, it's us or her type of a meeting. So we, we found her another agency to go to and we gently parted company. And so we're already down one. And as we started kind of getting our feet under us and having had a pretty good June, this is our first time last year as a, a three three producer team. At the beginning of July, our now top producer's son was tragically killed in a motorcycle accident. And so she was gone for two months and kind of limped through through the holidays and then has been gone all of January and will be gone all of February as she, she tries to get herself regrouped. It was her only child. And so that's, that's hard. So we're, we're functioning on kind of two out of four cylinders right now. We're still holding our own, but yeah, I like to, I like to try to get some, uh, one more producer in there for sure. Yeah. Where are you finding luck finding your top producers? Where are you going to right now? It's actually pretty interesting because I've decided that taking somebody from zero to 60 is very hard to do. And so I've stopped hiring new sales producers. And instead we have kind of a farm system, which is our service team. So we bring them into our service team and get them some, some reps under the belt. And they, they have, we, they have their licenses. They understand, finally understand ECRM. And yeah. it's just a lot to throw at somebody to say, come in and learn the insurance industry, learn all mm -hmm. of our technology, learn how to sell. And it's a lot. So our last three sales team have come up through the ranks. They're doing great. The most recent was an 18 year old girl that came to us straight from Target making minimum wage. And she's now making thousands of dollars a month. She's buying her first home. It's pretty exciting to see her, but she won that ALA award. She's very competitive and went against three Hall of Famers on our legacy team and beat them her first two months missed out her third month and came back and won it two more months. So she's a killer and we've got two more just like her in the hopper. So that that's, I've got the luxury because I do have a very solid sales team. And I'll tell you what, if you are on my sales team, nothing motivates more like seeing somebody come up that looks super, super good. And it's <laughs> like, they're, they're vying for your spot, man. So there's mm -hmm. only so many desks yeah. I can fit in here. So you need okay. to hit your numbers and you need to produce. And I think it's brought a lot more focus. So I I do hire people for service, but we never we never call it service because I think I I won't hire someone that says I don't want to do sales, I just want to do service. I won't hire them. They need to have some drive and not that all service people don't, but if you think my job's kind of sit here and hold this desk away from blowing away or I answer the phone, I get off as fast as I can so I get back to doing what I was doing. We don't want we don't want that in our organization. So we want people that are um, buy into the work ethic, caring, and product knowledge culture that we have, and that they're motivated to do everything they can. Yeah, I like the farm system you're using because right now, 
carriers are having the same problem. So they're having a hard time going out and finding hunters, which is being then the agency force now is going to have to recruit to hopefully get somebody interested for a position with the carrier. And so learning how to recruit those individuals that are great for inside sales. And then if they go ahead and work up and want to be straight sales, I think that that's a really great approach, Scott. Scott, what would be the best way for someone to connect with you, ask you questions, maybe follow you, support you? What's the what's the easiest way for them to do that? My email address would be, so one is my personal, which is smithix at gmail. And for people inside State Farm, my alias is UL5K. So if you email me any questions for State Farm agents and aspirants, I do have a Facebook page, which is free for anybody that's in the State Farm, either, like I said, an agent or an aspirant. And that is called Scott Smith AB, AB being for Agency Basics. In the first month, we already got 30, about 3,300 agents on the page. And I just share a lot of philosophies, a lot of things from my book coming up and things that I wish I would have known 10 years ago or 15 years ago when I started that can really help shortcut the process to where I'm profitable and I'm not stressing out all the time. I think everybody wants that. So those are the, those are the best ways to, to connect with me. I love it, man. Scott, thank you so much. This has been great. Thank you, Michael and Courtney. And please continue to do, do all you're doing. We appreciate it. Absolutely, brother. And for for you that is uh, watching right now or listening, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate you. As always, time is the most valuable and important asset that we all have. Go out and make it great. Bye.